We're going to introduce you to best-selling author Allison Graham. Uh, the book is Married My Mom, Birthed a Dog, How to Be Resilient When Life Sucks. Welcome. Welcome. Thank you for Thanks having so me. much for coming into town. You live in London. I do, but I love Toronto, so it's nice to be here. A great excuse to come in. Yeah, I love London, too. It's a great little city. It is. A little hidden secret in Ontario. <laughs> yes. Well, and another little hidden secret is you just told me you went to school there and never left. I, I am one of the few, it seems like, sometimes. But I love, I love, I grew up in a small town, and so this was a nice stepping stone. And a lot of my client work over the last decade has been in Toronto, so I still get a taste of the big city. Oh, and cool. Yeah, it's been fun. So the book was written, and it, it uh, in part, is about being a resiliency ninja. What is that? A resiliency ninja is someone who is feels like the proverbial fan is blowing boulders at them, and yet you are still showing up with a smile on your face and able to succeed, even though and I, I believe there's this collision that between who we are personally and how we show up professionally. And a lot of times you'll see somebody who's on, and that's how I felt for the last decade, uh, where I was, you know, in front of audiences and serving my clients in a consulting role. And then I would be having my mom drive me because I had so much neuropathic pain that I couldn't drive home on the highway. Wow. And so the married my mom birthed the dog joke started when uh, I had to, I, the doctors actually told me to consider going on disability and give up my, essentially, they were saying, give up on your hopes and dreams and all the work that you're doing because I had a surgery that went wrong. And then there were five subsequent surgeries, another one which went wrong. And that was the beginning of this dominoes of adversity. It's and interesting, it, you know, when stuff like that happens with people, um, it, it it's almost like their whole life is in turmoil in some ways, you know, because I hear about that every once in a while. Somebody will have a surgery that goes wrong and things just snowball and spiral from there. Well, and anybody who's ever faced obstacles in their life, they know that not one comes at you. Right. <laughs> it's usually yeah. a whole series of things that happened. And and yet we still have to show up with a smile on our face and do our jobs. And, and a lot of people, I believe, are suffering. I, th I think a lot of people don't have the tools to become, as I've coined the phrase, resiliency ninja. They are uh, often heading into victimhood where they kind of feel like they get stuck. So their pain, their mental health, their financial troubles, their you know injuries, their grief, and all of it I outline in the book because I, I went through it all in this decade of hell. And they make that their identity instead of you know, having it be a piece of who they are and finding and looking for that solution. And this book is all about how do you find that solution because there is always a solution. So in the 10 years of hell that you spent sort of going through this and getting to that point, um, I guess you can recognize in yourself there must have been times where you were stuck and in, in, in your story, right? Yeah. Like, this is what's happening to me. This is the way my life goes. And it is kind of that victim mentality that you can totally understand, but is really hard to move through when you're stuck in it. Well, you have to have the greater vision, but there's what I have in here is a resiliency ninja formula. Oh, perfect. So we, we talk about uh, having self-awareness. So understanding what you need to get through it. And I think a lot of it, too, is what I call the internal messenger of BS. Because <laughs> <laughs> we all have this voice inside our head, which is probably the harshest critic you are ever going to find. You wouldn't say, I don't know about you, maybe some of your listeners can relate, there are things that we say to ourselves that we would never say to a friend. Oh, I do that on a daily basis. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. Well, talk about when the world is beating you up with regular adversity and then we're living in our heads and being unkind to ourselves. How do we expect to heal and find the joyful moments in the awful that can happen? Isn't that, that is a tough one to let go of, it, like being easier on ourselves. It's hard, the judgment. So yeah. I talk a lot about that in the book. How do you calm that voice? and be kinder to yourself. You know, it's funny, Winston, my little dog, and he, he's, uh, if, because this happened during my 30s, he really helped fill a lot of that maternal void because I was just trying to survive. I wasn't worried about, you know, finding a husband and all of those things that I, I thought I should be doing at 30. But, you know, he, a dog, we can learn so much from them. They give us unconditional love. And I, I think that seeing how he loved me, whether I was 
on the couch having a Netflix marathon or whether I was in a full power suit going to speak for one of the national banks, right? Like he loved me equally. And I, I started to look at that and say, you know what, maybe I need to love me equally as well. That's interesting. And you know what I love about pets too, especially if you're on your own? Because I had, before I met uh, my husband, I had two cats and I was living on my own. And I found that if I didn't have them, I would never hear my own voice when I was home because I would have nobody to talk to. You just don't talk out loud that often, right? When you're by yourself. I never thought about it. You're right. You don't. It's great company. It is. Okay. So what are some tips now? Let's uh, get our listeners into this because you know what? I'm sure a lot of people can recognize um, when things go bad and things, seems like when things go bad, it's one thing after another. Is that normal? I, I believe it is. I think it's that domino effect of, you know, what we attract into our lives. A lot of self-help or personal development books would talk about, say, positive thinking. And not that I think you should think negatively, but I think we need to accept reality as it is. And so I think, you know, just wishing something away is not going to solve a problem. I think looking at it very objectively, and one of the exercises I have in here is around, uh, it's called my stay strong formula. So where you look at what's happening in your, in your life and you figure out what are the byproducts of this scenario that I can actually control. So for me, with neuropathic pain, I, I couldn't get rid of the pain. And so I was always desperately, originally, searching for that answer. How do I make it disappear? But once I started looking at, okay, I can't make the pain disappear, but I could, I got to figure out, the pain is telling me that I can't drive to Toronto to see a client perform and then go back home. So I had mom move to London. She came and now she became my chauffeur. Oh, wow. So that, that sort of strategy of the things we can't control will help. When you started to uh, figure out ways to become more resilient, did that help with your pain management? Absolutely. So the more joyful I am and the, the more accepting I am of the scenario and the reality of my physical presence and being, the less pain I have. But not just that the easier it is to control the pain. So the pain is there. The pain's there right now. If I were to focus on it, then I could, you know, be on, in the fetal position on the floor. But instead, I, I will accept it, not have that fight. Like when you're trying to get rid of what's causing the pain and you're not dealing with it, it's like, no wonder I was having a battle every day with myself, right? And, and feeling this pain. So I think... Pain will dissipate if you allow it and you don't fight it. Right. And yeah, as you say, it's also, I mean, look, people do legitimately have pain, um, but if you can focus less on it, it's, it doesn't become everything that you are. And sometimes people are able to uh, move through it. So here's an interesting text. Someone writes in, I'm really prone to self-sabotage. It happens over and over, and I have no idea why I keep doing it. Any ideas? Oh, yes. Well, actually, I have a, cha a chapter here on cutting the cord to self-sabotage in the book. So uh, something I went through as well, and I think part of it is looking at why are you sabotaging? So for me, it was a fear that I didn't physically have the ability. If I were to grow my company more than I did, and I was very blessed with um, what I, I was able to control, like grow in a part-time basis, if I, I was so afraid that if I got what I wanted, either A, wouldn't be happy, or B, I wouldn't succeed well enough, and then I would have failure, and I already, I had an excuse not to do that well. And so I think if she, if uh, our texter can look at what what is the reason, what are you fearful of that's causing you the self-sabotage? And the other thing is look for the looping patterns. We all have them. Repeating patterns until we learn the lesson that we need to learn to cut the cord to self-sabotage. One of my favorites is your headache will stop when you quit banging your head against the wall. <laughs> Right? <laughs> I love it. I mean, it's true. You keep doing the same thing over and over and saying, oh, why does this keep happening to me? Because right. you're doing the same thing over and over. 
a lot of times we don't notice the of pattern. Co- well, of course, right? Right. So I had uh, when one of the protocols when you get acquired pain is you get a pain psychologist. And so for years, I have seen somebody and I'm happy to talk about that because, you know, we just had Bell Let's Talk Day. And, and so we're all very open about that. And so I would see him for every two weeks for the last six or seven years. And I talk about him throughout the book, uh, Dr. Tony. And he would catch me in the most horrible things that I would say to myself out loud. He said, who are you talking about? And it took him interrupting the pattern for me in order to actually stop the looping of that. Yeah, for sure. I think that's one of the hardest things is to recognize that we're doing it. We're out of time. Thank you so much. Alison Graham, great to have you here. Thanks for having me. Let's do this again. Absolutely. Happy to chat anytime. All right. Terrific. Best-selling author, Alison Graham, and the book is Married My Mom, Birthed a Dog, How to Be Resilient When Life Sucks.